Okay, everybody, we are in the back pathway. It's an absolutely gorgeous day, and I love coming back here to have a sit down with a morning coffee and have a think on things. And one of the concepts I've been thinking on is cruelty with the intent of kindness to horses. This comes from a comment that came in that uh, I had been cruel to Annie when I made her wait 20 minutes for a carrot. Initially, I thought that's not a very nice thing to say because cruelty is usually a very bad thing, something that causes a lot of distress and a lot of destruction, essentially, to be cruel. But after some discussions here and there and some thought, it occurred to me that this should be discussed. This item should be talked about and thought about and have some kind of back and forth some way, somehow. I know right now I'm just talking to a camera. You're seeing it on the screen as a one-way thing, but perhaps in the comment section we can go over the philosophy of cruelty through kindness or the intent of kindness. So I think that there's two sides to argue, probably. In this case, one, I'm not being cruel at all. My intent of kindness is to teach. My intent of kindness is to give her an idea that not everything is hers, so on and so forth. The other side is that when you bring something tasty num nums to a horse, and you don't give it to them, and you make them wait and 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 wait, and wait then it is not kind. It's no longer kind, you're just being a tease or you're being uh, cruel in this case. So my mindset obviously is one of that I am not cruel. Uh, it is not mean to do this. So I'm going to argue that side for the time being here. And extrapolate that a little bit further because we need to kind of talk about what food aggression is and how horses get food aggression, which means we also need to kind of wander into the biological area and the nutrition area of what these foods actually are in compared to what a horse should be eating. Now, most horses should be eating hay, just hay, pretty much. There is very little scientific proof that additives and extra minerals and vitamins are required. There is very little science out there that shows that adding extra things is of a benefit to the horse health-wise. I'm not saying that there's none, but there's not very much. And plenty of horses get along just great, just fine with grass. Now that is fresh grass, so obviously it's going to have a little bit more of the vitamin content, but the minerals don't really change. And in fact, there could be less of a variety uh, one way or the other, just on the grass or just on the hay. So we don't really quite know, and plenty of horses get along just fine with just grass, just hay, and uh, live very happy, healthy lives. So, if we look at the idea of treats being held back as, as not a good thing, obviously we're looking at it in a way that says that doing that uh, harms them. And I would say the exact opposite for two reasons. One, carrots and apples and sugary items are actually very bad for horses. Horses are not, they were not built to absorb a lot of sugars, especially the sheer amount of sugars that people tend to give horses in sweet feeds. And there have been plenty of studies that have shown that animals, and humans for that matter, have a heavy addiction to sugars. It can actually cause all kinds of mental health issues. One of those things, we wander back to this conversation, is food aggression. The primary food aggression videos or topics that I've seen out there are from buckets of food. And in those buckets are usually fatty or sweet feeds. I would argue that food aggression also is probably because they're starving and they only eat two flakes in the morning, two flakes at night, but also because just like with any addiction, when you don't have it, you really, really, really want it, and you'll do anything to get it. And animals don't obviously have the ability to find logic in what an addiction is, like we do. We can say that coffees or uh, sugary coffees or donuts or cookies or candy or gum or whatever it is that has that sweet factor to it is addictive. We want it, can't help it. Smoking, great example, obviously other drugs and alcohol, all addictive substances, and we can know that. We can write it down, we can read it, we can learn from other people and communicate. Horses cannot. And as such, as humans, it is upon ourselves to be responsible and say, I, is what I'm doing good for the animal? Carrots, apples, other sweet fruits, and all sweet feeds that are filled with molasses. Uh, as a primary uh, sweet ingredient, from my understanding. 
um, are in fact just addictive substances. And in turn, we have to understand that we are modifying their behavior, likely in a negative direction, because we can objectively say that addictions for humans are usually, if not always, negative. An uncontrolled mental and emotional urge to have, get, consume, or do something. As such, holding back the carrots or not even feeding the carrots would be the kind thing to do. Goes in line with, if you are going to feed, sweet feed, all the time, and you get the horse into the habit that they should be getting sweet feed all the time, or apples or carrots, you're also going to be creating just a simple habit of that. And we've seen that. We had a recent horse here who would go ballistic at feeding time. Uh, the owner is adamant that the horse should be fed more, more than everybody else even. And that should calm that down. But that is the perfect sign of an addiction. <laughs> you know, if you're just going to kind of feed the monster, rather than be able to provide reassurance, like everything's fine, calm down, and keep practicing the opposite even, where if the horse does get excited, to bring them down. That, I believe, is kind. Rather than to perpetuate the habit of freaking out and having anxiety through not getting something in a timely manner, or in their opinion, a timely manner. The horses don't really have a concept of time, they really just want now. In this argument, the act of cruelty I'm committing is with the intent of kindness for Annie's future life. Annie's future life being that she may be around somebody who has carrots but doesn't want to give them to her yet. And there shouldn't be a time limit on when she should get them. In fact, Annie shouldn't even be considering that she should get them. She should just be like, oh, some carrots showed up, hope I get some, and that's it. That's where Annie's desire should stop. And without teaching her that, so this is my side of the argument, without teaching her that, she will have future anxiety, like the horse that was here recently, that can't be handled by humans. And in fact is dangerous, is where we go into the food aggression problem. By starting early and starting young and saying, look, anything I carry on me, it's mine, it's not yours. Don't even consider that it's yours. You can come up and say, hey, can I have some? And I get to say, I have the absolute and total right to say no. In fact, it should go a step further where they look at you and be like, oh, you look like you got carrots. That's cool. And that's it unless I'm giving the intent that I'm going to give some. And uh, I think that is a much kinder approach to horses and horse care and horse husbandry and that future for that horse. Because whether or not any is sold or I happen to pass away or go broke immediately or something like that and everybody's got to go, it doesn't matter. It's any circumstance that could be where Annie's going to be in the care of somebody else. She must be prepared to not run them over because she wants something that is actually not even good for her. We could almost say that not giving her carrots at all is actually the best form of kindness that I could ever provide for her because it's not good for her, it's not healthy for her. And also then she would also never have that issue of wanting to run somebody over uh, or bite or kick or pin their ears or whatever horses do to people to get what they want. Which brings to the other side of the argument of whether it is cruel to do that, especially to a horse that is used to it. And to that I say, sorta. Um, I have been convinced in a way that I can understand that to not think about all that stuff that I just finished talking about and say, this horse has been trained, this horse has been uh, acclimated, this horse has been made used to and habituated, to the idea that they are going to get food. Either they get it first, they're never last, they're never in the middle. Uh, somebody shows up eating a, an apple, they should absolutely get half that apple. Somebody shows up with carrots in their pockets, the carrots are not for the human, they are for the horse. That horse has been taught that they are for the horse. And uh, they have been taught if they sort of throw a temper tantrum, I don't want to kind of anthropomorphize too much, but if they sort of give the objective you know, if you objectively observe them as sort of being anxious or nervous or worried, we could call that, for lack of a better term, a temper tantrum or an argument, say, gimme. And if we feed that, if we feed that monster, if that, if that is fed, they, they freak out like, hey, calm down, here's your carrot, kind of idea, then obviously we're going to have that. And to not do that in the future is that not kind. And in a way, kind of. In a way, kind of. But I do think, think, think that there is a kind way of dealing with that problem for that horse's future, to get out of that habit and get out of those unhealthy addictions that are in place, either through just behavioral addictions, the idea that they can get 
frustrated or mad or, you know, no different than a child in a grocery store trying to get some candy or something like that. They freak out and yell and scream and cry. You hear it, not daily, but probably weekly, I hear some kids, <laughs> I want some candy. And um, the parent gives in, then you got the, the, a bigger monster the next time you show up. So I can understand that. I can understand that if I have acclimated a child to that, I've acclimated a horse to that, I've acclimated a dog to that, then to not do that is confusing and can be in turn sort of mentally or emotionally kind of mean or not kind. And you must, I believe you must sort of make up for that uh, in another way. You must reassure, you must be kind, you must be with them and say, hey, calm down. When you calm down and be chill and, and kind of move off and kind of give up, then you can have some tasty num-nums, uh, which in fact is not even good for them anyways. Uh, so something to consider is, and this can apply to all kinds of other things to do with horses, of course, but are there cases where we are sort of committing an act of cruelty with the intent of kindness? It's a fantastic, conversation to have. I would love to continue this and continue these thoughts with you guys and do another part if need be. Uh, if we get far enough down the road, we're all like, hey, you know, there's something to consider there. We can re-come back and maybe do a live uh, stream or a live chat on this kind of thing. But those are my thoughts. I do believe that it is not cruel. Uh, I have never taught Annie she just gets to get my food. I have never taught Annie that when I show up, she gets something. And I've never taught Annie she gets to just consume as much as she wants and in fact should keep her space and be careful. She's learning that she can ask and be a bit curious. And I think that's the kindest thing of all to be clear and concise and uh, with my communication so that she understands what's happening. And that's what I believe brings the most peace to horses anyways, is where we, we very much consider that our communication, our behaviors are understandable, you know, not confusing and not wishy-washy. I mean, it's not that I'm not wishy-washy, but for the most part, very um, consistent. And that's that's what helps horses the most. That's the kindest thing. That's the, the least cruel thing in, in, in general. To create habits that will keep us safe because it keeps them safe. Uh, a dangerous horse or an uneducated horse, as they say, is a dead horse. And so that's what we don't want. But I understand the opposite mentality of that it appears to be not kind of, it, like if we take, for example, if I were to go up to a horse and I'd be waving the carrot in his face and poking it in the nose and giving it a, a lick or something like that, and then I take it away. That's not nice. I don't think that's kind at all. I don't think teasing an animal like that. But if I've only got them on my person and uh, I have not appeared that I'm going to give any of them, I'm just, as I was doing, just standing there, then uh, I, don't, I don't believe that that account, um, amounts to being unkind. But the opposite does. If you're flaunting them and showing them off and saying, hey, do you want it? <laughs> and then pulling it away. I don't think that's nice. So anyhow, those are my thoughts. There's a whole pile of them. I'm sure I'll have more after I'm done because I always think of things, ah, oh, I should have said blah, blah, blah. But, you know, anyways, it's a gorgeous day today. Uh, fantastic view I get to look at here. And obviously behind me as well, we're in the middle of the forest. My favorite spot to sit down and just ponder stuff, sound of the water. The quiet of the forest and the squirrels and the birds and it's beautiful. So that's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.